Tonight, a former leader in Brentwood's Remnant Fellowship says it's time for the church to come clean about its role in the child abuse death of a young boy. Good evening, I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Carrie Sharp. Michael Shamblin, the son of controversial religious figure Gwen Shamblin, says Remnant Fellowship needs to acknowledge what he now realizes, that eight-year-old Joseph Smith did not have to die. This is a case that News Channel 5 chief investigative reporter Phil Williams has been tracking for two decades. Phil, this is really a full circle moment for you. Uh, in indeed, it has been. My investigation first raised questions about little Joseph's death back in 2004. Now Michael Shamblin tells me the church needs to ask itself the same questions that I had for his mother. This is God's Word. I didn't come up with spankings. And the Bible says, do not spare the rod or spoil the child. Hey, praise God, praise God, praise God. This was the beginning of my investigation 20 years ago, focusing on the child abuse death of eight-year-old Joseph Smith from Atlanta. His parents, Joseph and Sonia Smith, were charged with his murder, with investigators noting that the child had extensive bruising over his entire body. But the Smiths showed no remorse. They felt it was just a part of discipline and were very defensive about their religion. The Smiths were members of Brentwood's Remnant Fellowship. The church paid their legal bills and it still operates a website called The Smiths Are Innocent, 17 years since they were convicted by a jury and sentenced to life in prison. So I feel like my life has been a life of discovery. I didn't know at the time. We were going along with it. Michael Shamblin was there when I confronted his mother, Remnant founder Gwen Shamblin, and church leader Ted Inger about little Joseph's death. Uh, the child ran into a banister. The head swelled up. The, uh, that child had a seizure. They called 911. The child passed away in a hospital. Did she really believe that? She was scared. This had just happened. I think she she was doing, coming up with doing whatever she could to protect herself and the church. Years later, reviewing the conviction, Georgia's Supreme Court would note that Joseph and Sonia Smith routinely disciplined their son Joseph by beating him with glue sticks, belts, and heated coat hangers, locking him in confined spaces for extended periods of time, and tying his hands with rope. Michael Shemblin's view now? The courts had all the evidence, and they decided that the Smiths murdered their, their son, and they're in prison to this day. So I, I now think something did happen to little Joseph. Do you view little Joseph as a victim of Remnant, of Gwen? I believe had they never joined Remnant, little Joseph could very possibly be alive today. Let's put it that way. Children that were lost and out of control are now back under the authority of their loving parents. And For Gwen Shamblin, well-behaved children were a sign of holiness, holiness that could be achieved through severe corporal punishment. If they're not scared of a spanking, you haven't spanked them. If you haven't really spanked them yet, you don't love them. You love yourself. Yet Remnant has still refused to acknowledge what my investigation had uncovered. Does Remnant advocate repeated spankings of children over and over and over? No, sir. Absolutely not. No, sir. Absolutely no. not. Look, I, I was there in the sanctuary when David Martin made that now infamous line about the showdown spanking. David Martin was one of Remnant's top leaders. A year ago, our two and a half year old Avery, we had a real showdown with her. And we had a, 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 a leg spanking over and over and over and over and over and over again and, uh, time one evening. David Martin had a real showdown. It was a one night showdown. And that child never forgot it. Are you asking, does that go on very often? Are you kidding? No, it does not. It is so rare. And it is only strong-willed children. Little Joseph was, by all accounts, a child who may have suffered from mental illness. A remnant's view of mental illness would be there is no mental illness. They would just say, you must be doing something wrong before God. Tell me about the use of glue sticks to spank children. It was not from here. It came no. from a member somewhere, someplace else, because there are, there are, there are, and, then, and, it, and it went around. I never actually saw a child being whipped with a glue stick. 
but knowing what I know now, like looking back, I, I'm, I know that le some leaders, somewhere some leaders did talk about using glue sticks. Does Remnant advocate locking children up for lengthy periods Abs of time? I, not, they, we don't advocate locking them up for any period of time. From what I've known, learned since then, I absolutely think people have taken away everything except remnant materials and put people in a room, things like that. And we have the recording. I have a recording. I did exactly what Ted told me to do, take everything out of his room. We got everything out of there and locked him in there from that Friday until Monday and only left him in the room with his bottle. That tape has been made or tampered or whatever, I d totally deny that, that that has true. ever been said by anyone. And that's a miracle. You've got a child that's going from just bizarre down to in control. So I praise God. And you had a chance to tell her that was not correct. That was not on there. Instead, you said, praise the Lord. No, that was not on there. So I'll go back to when you said in your original interview. Do you think it's possible that you have inadvertently encouraged child abuse? No, 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 no. I agree with that now. I, I always agreed with it. I always felt like what you were saying is she would not let you talk and she would interrupt you. But you were saying, could somebody take these teachings to an extreme? Is that possible? That's all you were asking. And thank you for uh, Gwen, Almighty God. And Three years after Gwen Shamblin's death, Remnant members still speak of her as a prophetic figure, and the Smiths are viewed as martyrs for the faith. When they call in, the people at Remnant, they go crazy clapping every time Joseph or Sonia calls in. And anyone in the church would agree with me, I believe. Michael Shamblin, who was also once considered a Remnant leader, says the church is overdue for a reckoning over what happened to an innocent Remnant child. The first step in most of these situations, it's acknowledgement. Admit you have a problem. Yes. And I would say, let's start, Remnant, let's start with acknowledgement of there have been imperfect situations in this church, lots of them. We have to come to grips with that. They have to. Gwen was fallible. She was a human. She wasn't God or she wasn't some, you know, divine. She was human and made a lot of mistakes. People have been hurt uh, in various ways from Gwen, from this whole thing. Joseph and Siani's life changed drastically. Little Joseph is dead. Take the damn filter off. Start, get real. Let's get real for once and quit pretending to be the perfect place. Then let's, then we can talk. The Remnant Fellowship has still not responded to my inquiries, although church leaders have been telling members to, quote, focus on the fruit. That means to look at all the weight they've lost and other positive changes in their lives, which they say means that Remnant is, quote, from God. Of course, Michael Shemplin says if you really want to see the fruit, you need to look at what happened to little Joseph, as well as all the shattered lives of those who have left what he calls a cult. Phil, I'm so curious. Michael was once all in. What has all of this done to his faith? Well, in a word, broken. Uh, he says that it is, has completely broken his sense of trust in organized religion, but he now takes comfort in building bonds with other former remnant members, and he's hoping more will actually reach out. He's on social media as Michael S. Black. He's really starting a new life. Absolutely. Yeah. And really brave of him. Absolutely. Sit down and be so honest with you. Yeah, no, no doubt about it, because it's breaking from his past mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Phil, thanks. And by the way, if you missed any of Phil's interview with Michael, you'll want to watch. You can watch them all right now on <coughs> newschannel5.com slash investigates.